Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, I know that it's a little bit surprised because we never know exactly what we are serving as outside or inside, but after all last night, rain for the poor in between. Tomorrow, probably both messes will serve outside and say family members and neighbors because I about a lot outside, but I think this evening is better here inside. And we are celebrating this weekend 13 Sunday of the ordinary time. And Jesus in the gospel reminds us one of the most, most important words. If we want to be close to him, if we want to be as a disciples of Jesus, we have to take our cross and follow him. Practically, what he explains that we have to find people who need help and then help him. Then, if we help them, we are help to Jesus. Try to remember what we do, what we want to do in our weekday life, and how we can take Jesus' cross. Now, in the beginning of this Eucharist, let's turn to God. Sorry for our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done, in what I failed to do. In my fault, to my fault, to my most grievous fault. Therefore, I have blessed Mary, our Virgin, all the angels and the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to the lasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the hearts, and on earth peace to people of the world. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And I didn't say on the beginning, because this Mass we uh, search for the case for the offer of this Eucharist. Let us pray. O oh God, who through the grace of adoption chose us to be children of light, grant, we pray, that we may not be wrapped in the darkness of error, but always be seen to stand in the bright light of truth. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The first reading is a reading from the second book of Kings. One day, Elisha came to Shuman, where there was a woman of influence who urged him to dine with her. Afterward, whenever he passed by, he used to stop there to dine. So she said to her husband, I know that Elisha is a holy man of God. Since he visits us often, let us arrange a little room on the roof and furnish it for him with a bed, table, chair, and lamp, so that when he comes to us, he can stay there. Some 
Blessed the Lord, bless the Lord who know the joyful shout. In the light of your countenance, O Lord, they walk. At your name they rejoice all the day, and through your justice they are exalted. You are the splendor of their strength, and by your favor our horn is exalted. For the Lord belongs our shield, and to the Holy One of Israel our King. The second reading is a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, are you unaware that we who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were indeed buried with him through baptism into death, so that, just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too live in newness of life. If then we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. We know that Christ, raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has power over him. As to his death, he died to sin once and for all. As to life, he lives for God. Consequently, you too must think of yourselves as dead to sin and living for God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to his apostles, Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take up his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds his life will lose it. And whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Whoever receives you, receives me. And whoever receives me, receives the one who sent me. Whoever receives a prophet, because he is a prophet, will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever receives a righteous man, because he is a righteous man, will receive a righteous man's reward. And whoever gives only a cup of cold water to one of these little ones to drink, because the little one is a disciple. Amen, I say to you, he will surely not lose his reward. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I know I normally stand down there uh, to do a homily. So it feels a little awkward up here. <laughs> Seven feet, I can stay away. <laughs> I have been writing, so now I can't do that. <laughs> you know, I used to think I was really smart when I was young. But now that I find that many things that I thought I understood and thought I knew, was convinced of it, I had it completely backwards, or didn't know at all. Perhaps some of you may have already known this about me in my arrogance. I am a pet owner and I've had pets my entire life. Some of you may also be a pet owner and may be able to relate to this story. As a pet owner, we get the idea that we want to go out and adopt or purchase a dog or a cat, perhaps a horse or ducks or hens or even a bird or a fish. We do so with the full intention of being kind and taking care of them, feeding them, protecting them, providing shelter and other things involved with taking care of them. In my mind, when I was younger, I used to view this merely as a one-way street, that it was me who was taking care of them and providing for their needs. 
a normal idea, and truly it is. Perhaps, I even at times, I thought it was generous. But in my mind, it was always one side. It was about me taking care of them. Well, one day, it dawned on me. I had one of those rare occasions where I woke up in the middle of the night worrying about everything that was going on in my life. As my mother would say, trying to solve the problems of the world. So I went downstairs and sat on the couch. As it is good, continuing to worry and let my mind wander. But then I noticed that my 80 pound lap dog had climbed up on my lap and just lay there and had manipulated it to be right underneath my hands so that they were just resting on me. Before I knew it, my worrying had stopped and my mind was put at peace. My worries had vanished and I felt the need to thank God for being there and putting my 80 pound dog not only in my life, but in my lap at that moment. Funny how this one-way relationship became and probably always was a two-way relationship. And this relationship opened my mind toward God, even though that was never my intention. And if I'm truly honest, there are times that I receive more from my past and from people in my life than I did. Today's scripture tells us a similar message. In our first reading, we heard about the relationship between the prophet Elisha and the Shumanite woman, whereby the Shumanite woman invites Elisha to stay and to dine with her and her husband whenever he came to town. Later, they even fix up a room in which he could spend the night. Now, if we could pause for a moment and think about the times when we invite people into our own homes for a meal, or maybe even friends or family to spend the night, what happens? We normally gather into the kitchen, at least in our family, it's what we do, nibbling on food and talking while we're preparing the meal. Later on, we sit around the table when it's time to eat. We ask questions talk, and listen, sometimes. After eating, we sit around some more and talk and catch up and try to learn what's going on in each other's lives and what's important. Now, I'm quite certain that by inviting Alicia into their home for a meal to spend the night, the Shumanite woman and her husband quit and question and listen to the prophet Alicia on everything that he had learned from his mentor, the prophet Elijah, about everything that he had known about God. Now on the surface, from the individual perspectives, we can see that this relationship between the prophet Elisha and the Shunite woman has one side. Elisha goes there and is provided with food. And later on, a place to stay. He was just being taken care of. And a woman and her husband, on the other hand, I believe that they're standing in the presence of a holy person. And the least that they could do is provide food and a place for them to stay. Each in their own way. It looks like a one-way relationship. But God works in funny ways, and each of them were dependent on, on the other. They each gave up their time and their talents and opened themselves up to God. And when we pause and let God not only into our lives, but into our relationships as well, as we heard in the gospel, we are greatly rewarded. Especially when we're drawn to listening and to learning about it the inspired word of God, as we hear here at Mass. Matthew tells us in today's Gospel that whoever receives a righteous person or a prophet into their lives will be rewarded. 
spending time with our pets and with loved ones, or going to visit someone in a hospital or in a nursing home, or just calling to say hello, can and does bring peace of mind to each of us and brings ourselves to open ourselves to God. Now, we may think that is a one-way relationship where we're going out of our way to be benevolent, to be generous and help people. But it truly is just the opposite. For when we do that, we are actually receiving more than we give. About 10 years ago, I remember taking our youth group to a local nursing home. It was right around Christmas time, so we took some of the small gifts that those in the preschool had made and gave them to uh, one of the older boys and some of the older girls to distribute to the residents. They rolled their eyes a little bit, you know, being teenagers, you know, how can we ask them to do this? But they took it nonetheless. Said, here's a bag. Said, you guys, as we go around singing, hand it out to the residents. And I do remember that the one boy a big football player turned around when he was missing. And I found him sitting in a corner in tears. Because those gifts meant so much to the residents, he realized how selfish he was. And that was the greatest gift that he had ever received. For as in giving that we receive, it is in following God's word through us that we are able to receive and do his will. Spending time with others and letting God be present does provide us with peace of mind. How much greater of a reward will we receive when we spend time reading and reflecting on the word of God found in sacred scripture? We will be able to hear God guiding and speaking to us and putting us at peace. In return for her kindness and learning about God, Alicia told the Shumanite woman that she would have her wishes fulfilled by having a baby who finally come to fruition. God tells us that we will receive a reward for placing God first in our lives. And when we are there to help others and welcome righteous people and those who spread the good news, so what is the reward that you seek? Is it a reward that's material and subject to earth? Or is it a reward that's further off and harder to quantify where we seek the greater good of God and eternal life of Him? I pray that you take some time to think about the reward that you seek. And then also take a moment and reflect on the Word of God. Place him first in your life, always, but especially during that moment. And then pause and feel the peace that comes from that two-way relationship. For if we act in this manner, we will receive the peace that only comes from God. And we will start to feel our reward. May God bless you.
say he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess my baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Confident in the abundance of the Father's love, we bring our prayers and petitions before Him. For church leaders, may God look graciously upon them as they continue to strengthen and give courage to those entrusted to their pastoral care. Let us pray to the Lord. To the Lord. For all civil leaders, may the God of peace and justice inform their efforts. Let us pray to the Lord. To the Lord. Lord. For all who are alienated from God and His Church, may Christ's message of love and healing penetrate their hearts and reconcile them to Him. Let us pray to the Lord. To the Lord. For all of us gathered here this evening, may God restore in us whatever is necessary for the fullness of life and health. Let us pray to the Lord. To the Lord. For the sick, the suffering, the infirm, the lonely, and those who don't have anyone to pray for. Remember those commended to our parish list of the sick. They continue to receive and experience the healing hand of God. Let us pray to the Lord. The Lord, Lord hear our prayers. We pray for our beloved dead. Remember in a special way Dick Kish for whom this Mass is offered, as well as Aradan Sherman and Mary Cicero, who recently died. That they and all of the beloved dead may come to share in the fullness of Christ's glory and enjoy his favor forever. Let us pray to the Lord. The Lord hear our prayer. For those prayers we hold within the silence of our minds and our hearts. For these, let us pray to the Lord. The Lord hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we rejoice in your Son Jesus Christ and in the gift of your Holy Spirit. Hear the prayers we offer this day. Through Jesus Christ, who is our Lord forever and ever. salvation 
always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God through Christ our Lord. For by his birth he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering canceled out our sins, by his rising from the dead he has opened the way to eternal life, and by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so, with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and the found of all holiness. Make holy therefore this gifts we pray by taking down your spirit upon them like the beautiful, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks wrote it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, bishops, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, especially remember the Christ of whom we pray at this Mass, and also Cardinal Serling and Mary Sistro, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son. Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by the divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy 
we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Maintaining social distancing once we offer each other a sign of Christ. Lamb of God, you make away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you make away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you make away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy to stand under my word, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. May this divine sacrifice you have offered and received fill us with life, O Lord, we pray, so that bound to you in lasting charity, we may bear fruit that lasts forever through Christ our Lord. Amen. <laughs> Again, brothers and sisters, thank you for attending, joining real prayer, physical attendance here in church. But remember that we pray for each other, people who afraid to come, who feel not really good, they stay at home. They have the possibility to watch uh, from our website our mess and uh, remember for sure that this is dispensation from the obligation to attend for Sunday Mass. But let's stay in prayer for each other because we are one family, one St. Cyprian community. And I also remind you that Tuesday we open church all day after morning, the Blessed Sacrament is on the altar for adoration until 7.27 in the evening will be ending the rosary and benediction. And I hope, as I said, tomorrow we'll serve Masses outside. Any weekend, if weather permitted, we'll serve Mass outside. As I said, today was a little bit wet, and then during the, after <coughs> last night, it was kind of storm. But any weekend is much nicer people love this. This time's easier outside for, for masses in our grove. And we see final blessing. Ah, remember, you can take bulletin because each door uh, can find bulletin. Just take one uh, or two, but not share with this. And if you can have something extra paper in the packet, you can put to the collection uh, basket each two door also. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Mass is ended. Go in peace, serving the Lord with your life. Thanks be to God.